After a week in Scotland, Ryan and I hopped on a flight on his namesake airline to visit Ireland, the Emerald Isle. Join us as we explore Ireland's capital city of Dublin in a jam-packed two days. Make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications if you're interested in joining us on future adventures. After landing, Ryan and I took the Dublin Express bus towards the city centre. We stayed at the Hyatt Centric The Liberties Dublin, which is located in the Liberties neighbourhood, one of Dublin's most distinctive and historically significant neighbourhoods. Make sure to check out our hotel and room tour video of the Hyatt Centric Dublin through the link at the end of our video. After checking in and dropping off our things, we set out to have some dinner and found ourselves at O'Neill's Pub. O'Neill's Pub is a traditional old Irish pub with various areas to explore its history. I had a carved meat sandwich, and Ryan had the beef and Guinness stew. We made our way through the city center as we headed back to the hotel after dinner. We started our next morning with breakfast at the hotel. A traditional Irish breakfast. Our first stop was St. Patrick's Cathedral, which was just around the corner from our hotel. It was founded in 1191 as a Roman Catholic cathedral. And is currently the National Cathedral of the Church of Ireland. The stained glass windows tell the story of St. Patrick in 39 episodes. This chair was used by King William III in 1690. We Americans are impressed by anything that old. It's older than our country! Jonathan Swift, author of Gulliver's Travels and Dean of the Cathedral from 1713 to 1745, is buried here alongside his dearest friend, Stella. St. Patrick's Cathedral is a definite must-do when visiting Dublin for the very first time. Next, we headed over to Trinity College, which was founded in 1592 by Queen Elizabeth. The Book of Kells is an illuminated manuscript of the four Gospels of the New Testament. It originated in the 9th century and is famous for the intricacy, detail, and majesty of the illustrations. No photo or videos are allowed of the pages themselves, so we have none to include for this video. Next, we visited the long room of the Old Library, one of Ireland's biggest attractions. It holds thousands of rare and early volumes of various literature, and is the permanent home of the Brian Boru Harp, the oldest surviving Irish harp dating from the 14th or 15th century. Making our way back west towards our hotel, we made a stop at Dublin Castle. Dublin Castle dates back from the early 13th century and is currently an Irish government complex. We started to explore the grounds through the state apartments. The grand staircase was the first of its type in Dublin and has welcomed many debutantes and aristocrats over the years. We made our way through the castle including the state corridor, which houses portraits of every Irish president since independence. The state drawing room was built in 1838 and used as a formal sitting room. The throne room was installed for the visit of King George IV in 1821 and features an ornate brass chandelier. The portrait gallery hosts a collection of portraits of Irish viceroys since 1849. 
It was used as a dining room where state dinners were held. The Wedgwood Room was completed in 1777 and became the castle's billiard room. Next, we made our way to St. Patrick's Hall, one of Ireland's greatest ceremonial rooms. Continuing on our way, we made a stop at Christchurch Cathedral. Christchurch Cathedral was founded in the early 11th century and has stood at the center of Dublin for over 1,000 years. The beautiful stained glass windows date mostly from the 1870s. Strongbow was a nobleman notable for his leading role in the Anglo-Norman invasion of Ireland in the 12th century. The crypt below is the largest in Ireland and houses some interesting artifacts and displays. Including some silverware from the 17th century. and a 14th century copy of the Magna Carta. One of the strangest but interesting displays is the mummified cat and rat. Workers found the cat and rat in the church's organs during the organs maintenance in the 1860s. They are so well preserved you can still see the cat's whiskers. Another interesting find belongs to St. Lawrence O'Toole, the patron saint of Dublin. His preserved heart has been at the church since the 1180s. It was stolen in 2012 but returned in 2018. It was time for lunch, so we stopped at Brother Hubbard. We saw Brother Hubbard on the Netflix show, Somebody Feed Phil, so we wanted to check it out ourselves. The menu features Middle Eastern-inspired dishes grown locally and seasonally. Ryan had the meaty meze tray. And I had the porchetta. The ingredients are quality and really complement each other well. After lunch, we headed back to the Liberties to make our way round the Whiskey Triangle. Our first stop was the Jameson Distillery on Bow Street. The Jameson Distillery on Bow Street was founded by John Jameson himself in 1780. And whiskey was distilled on site until 1971. It is now a visitor center that provides guided tours, whiskey tastings, a bar and gift shop. We did the Bow Street Experience Tour which included three tastings and a mixed drink. After the Jameson Distillery, we continued our way around the Liberties onto our next stop. Teeling Distillery is one of a new generation of distilleries reviving Dublin's whiskey industry. We took a tour of the distillery that walked us through various stages of the distilling process. And that's how bad the situation was. They had to join together and become basically one company. Paris is the last to close. And of course we get to try whiskey at the end. 
we continued our way around the Liberties to Dublin's number one attraction. The Guinness Storehouse The storehouse is a huge facility with several floors that walk you through the history and brewing process of the legendary beer. And of course we had to stop by the tasting room. I really love the exhibit featuring Guinness ads throughout the years. At the top is the gravity bar, where you can take in sweeping views of Dublin and enjoy a pint of Guinness or two. After making our way around the Whiskey Triangle, it was time for dinner. What better place to get dinner than another Irish pub, after we've already gone on three drinking tours? I wanted some live music and Google that Darkie Kelly's was a good spot. The menu features classic Irish dishes and other pub fare. The seafood chowder was more mussels than chowder and definitely hit the spot. And more beef and Guinness stew. And of course more Guinness. After dinner, we headed towards Temple Bar because no first-time visit to Dublin would be complete without checking out the infamous Temple Bar. That ends our long day seeing as many sights as we could in Dublin. We hope you enjoyed our video. Leave any questions or comments in the comment section below and like, subscribe and check out our other videos. We'll see you next time!